amid calls for a third force following the largely poor performance of the two major political parties in managing the country's resources to come up. Former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Gali Uma Na'aba, says the third force being promoted will not work. Well, joining us to discuss this is a public affairs analyst, Ambrose Igboke. Thank you very much, Ambrose Igboke, for joining us. Yeah, good evening. Great. So, I mean, we're all very familiar with the third force. And um, the first time we heard of the third force, um, the name of the former president, Lucia Gomabasanja, was thrown around as one who was, you know, putting together the third force. But he did say that he was not, he had nothing to do with the third force. And then we, of course, had another front that was um, being pushed by um, Professor Pat Tomi. We've seen the likes of Femi Falana and, and the likes of um, um, Abakoba. All of them, you know, pushing for uh, a, a different front to somewhat upstage the existing big political parties. But uh, the former speaker here is coming out to say that this will not work. Why do you think he's taking that position? Is it that the PDP and the APC are too powerful and that they probably are the most dominating and nobody or any other political party or any other coalition can upstage them? Well, first of all, um, I don't like the name, the thought force. Uh, the use of force in a democracy uh, is something of um, is an anathema. It doesn't all go well. It doesn't sound well. Um, you cannot be talking about a force in a democracy. Even the Nigerian police that has force in its name, the Nigerian police force has removed the force in its name in a bit to sound very democratic and friendly. And then we, the, polit the politicians, are now coming with a name, with force in it. So that means it, it is contradictory. Uh, secondly, uh, who are the members of the third force? I mean, those who are the particular back members of the third force are people who are actually uh, politicians from the various divides. They are politicians from the, uh, from the CPC, from the ANPP, from the PDP, from the AD, AC, ACN, uh, from APGA, from all the conglomeration of the different political parties. These are the same people that maybe because of one uh, disgruntledness uh, or the other, they were disenchanted and left their former parties. And the same politicians are coming back again to say they want to form a third force. So um, uh, the former uh, Speaker of House of uh, Reps uh, may have some information that is working on because these are politicians. They know each other. Uh, they know themselves. But what we are talking about actually is to strengthen the systems. Because whether you form, you form a third force, a fifth force, or a tenth force, if the system that shows up uh, uh, candidates for, politi from, for political parties and their political positions, if the system is not reformed, is this we are just going to be changing nomenclature and not uh, in, uh, actually arriving at any better uh, structure for uh, our people. So whether you change nomenclature, you form a political party, call it whatever name, it is the same people that will still uh, be a part of those uh, systems. So we have to be conscious of how to build our political system so that it will checkmate whoever that holds public office. And that is the only solution. Let me, let me go to some of the things that um, the former speaker said, and I'd like to quote him directly. He said, it is still being explored, but a third force is very difficultly or difficult, he said, to attain uh, a standard today. He's also saying that for that to be able to work out, um, it will entail massive appeal to the people, and there must be a deployment of a high degree of material resources, which a lot of people that have been contracted were reluctant to give, uh, given the nature of the political system. He says already this trust has been created by way and manner of existing political parties uh, and how they have played out in the last 20 years. So it is, of course, getting difficult. And it appears that only recourse, or the only recourse, is for people of good conscience and mind to come into the main parties and attempt to reform them. So I ask you, who are these people of good conscience that have the, not just the persona, but the wherewithal to cause a reform in the political party. And, and I'd just like to, I know that you know this, but then of course the PDP, the APC are having their own internal fracas, which they have been taking each other to court back and forth. 
Um, so, and that's because, again, if we look at it really with uh, some microscopic lens, we can tell that there are many strong men within the party and everybody's trying to, you know, um, have a fist cuff of sorts. So who are these people? Where are they going to come from uh, that will have such power uh, to be able to cause an, a reform when the system in itself is already tainted? <laughs> uh, there's this uh, popular song downtown that said that if you ask me that who I will ask, that if you ask me that question, who am I expected to, how am I expected to answer it? Who is the right person? You see, politics in Nigeria have to be re-engineered by people of good conscience. Let me use the same language. Who are these people? Where do the people of good conscience start? The problem we have is that people, professionals, who or people who are trying to bring new ideas into politics want to start at the top. They want to contest for presidency, senator, and red. I think the social re-engineering of our electoral system or where good people can be imputed is when they go, go to your local government, go to your ward. Let's start from there. Go to your uh, local government. Go to your house of assembly. Start from, because it is people from these places that are thrown up from their wards, from their local government and state to start having national positions. We have, we have not been able to realize that. So uh, when people come with ideas, the person they want to jump, they want to, be, they want to contest for governorship. They want to contest for House of Rep and Senate and all those uh, lofty offices. Uh, if we don't start from the bottom to start re-engineering the mindset of, political, of, uh, of, uh, of our political landscape, first of all, the electorate, and then good men coming and good men and women coming out to tell the electorate how things are and give them examples at the, look, at the grassroots level, then we cannot give them the examples at the, uh, at the state or national level. So uh, to an extent, I think Elijah uh, uh, Naba is right in the sense that for you, uh, the elections are just a few months away. Uh, I mean, we don't have up to two years for that. And then we want to talk about coming up with a, a new political system that can challenge APC or PDP. Um, it's more like a mere wishful thinking. Mm. The only thing that can make it work was what happened to PDP uh, before the 2015 election, where some disgruntled elements in PDP had to leave and join forces with the emerging APC, with the emerging uh, alliance between the CPC and, AC, uh, and ACN. And that's why that tripartite convergence was what made them to be able to even clinch power. Mm. If the PDP was not divided then, I don't think they would have lost it. So, the uh, is right. It is not going to be a tea party. And for now, we don't need uh, this thought force or whatever. For all we need is to strengthen what, uh, the system we have and make the electorate have uh, more enlightened so that they can make better choices come in 2023. Um, I'm curious um, because looking around, it's very even, it's pretty even difficult for you as a political analyst to point out who these persons of good conscience, because we keep, it's easy for us to throw around these words, people of good conscience, um, people who are, have the best interest of Nigeria at heart. But then it's very difficult when it comes down to pointing out or calling naming names, it's very difficult for us to do that. So does this mean or does this reflect badly on us as a society that we probably are the problem and we do not have these men and women who can actually, who we can point to as men and women of good conscience? Because everybody seemed to have um, an interest of sorts uh, and not necessarily the interest of the people at heart. Does this not reflect badly on us as a people? Well, we, can, we, we have good people in Nigeria. We have great men. We have great women. We have uh, Nigerians who have, uh, you know, excelled in their chosen endeavors, be it uh, professionally, uh, be it uh, even in sports. Uh, be it academically, administratively, we have them everywhere. Now, because the way our political structure is, uh, is uh, established, uh, some of those people may not have what we call the financial powers or the financial uh, wherewithal to go to political space and contest. And that is actually the problem for party funding in Nigeria is an issue. The individuals from the what about crowdfunding? I'm sorry, I'm sorry to speak over you. What about crowdfunding? Yes. I'll tell you why I'm asking this. And this is not taking a jab at whoever, but we see 
fans of certain people from a certain reality show crowdfunding to buy them houses, to buy them cars. But then when it comes to the people who are going to lead us so that we can have a better tomorrow, we do not see that same energy. So again, I ask, are we the problem? Uh, crowdfunding will only work more if we have independent candidates. As for from now, the law does not allow for independent candidacy. And that is where we need I'm to... I'm sorry, but when President Buhari system. was running for this office, there seemed to be some a similar thing, like a crowdfunding where he said uh, Nigerians gave money uh, you know, to help fund his campaign and all of that. Um, so it's not like it's illegal under the Nigerian constitution, is it? I mean, when the, when the president was contested 2014, those are publicity stunts, like the one that won. Yeah, but is it is it illegal? Woman, woman, is it illegal? But is that it is illegal? Not what, that was not what he, he executed his election with. We saw the president then having, uh, moving in private jets of uh, people like the governor of the River State and the, uh, the leader of APC, Ashwa Jitinubu, and the rest. And then you know, a lot of money watches was brought into. Elections are expensive uh, everywhere in the world. But this is the funding that is the problem. So the crowdfunding you're talking about will not work because if, if there is a, a candidate, an independent candidate that people trust and doesn't belong to any political party, people can say, let's crowdfund for this guy and make him uh, great money for him, for him to contest the election. But uh, Nigerians will not crowdfund for a political party. They won't do that. So I, I'm a realist and a pragmatist. Uh, why there is, we don't, ideas are good and the rest, but no, many Nigerians will not even toy with the idea of crowdfunding for a political party unless they are the loyalists of those parties. In those days, in, 19, in the 1960s, the way those parties were called like action group and the rest, they had membership cards. When you attend, when you pay your monthly, your monthly dues. You pay your dues to but the, the big, But the big political parties so, also have membership cards. Way. They do have membership cards, but I do not, what I do not know is if they pay monthly dues. But to be a member of the APC or the PDP, of course you do have a membership card. But then the yeah, financial, the financial implications is what I do not know. You know what I'm talking about is those days, party, with, party, party uh, candidates were funded through dues that they pay. Members pay dues. But now members don't pay dues. So how do a political party fund its candidates? So it goes back to what we are saying, that the funding, political fund funding, uh, party funding in Nigeria is, is not correct. Because it's individuals that want to contest elections or whatever that fund the party. And he who, who plays the pipe and dictates the tune. You don't expect somebody to invest in it, but they call it investment. You invest your hard-earned money, you spend money on the party, and then when it comes to choosing candidates, you say, oh, let's make it egalitarian, let's make it meritocracy and all that. It doesn't work together. Therefore, we need to address party funding. That is the basics. If you don't go back to that basic to see how party funding issue is addressed, then everything cannot be the only thing we're talking about with the mere academic exercise. I'd like to talk about that quickly before we go. Party funding. I remember in 2019, the last election that we had, Sarah, um, even before 2019, had been asking polit major political parties in Nigeria, including the ones that are not so major, I'm talking about the likes of APCA, um, to make public their party finances, to let Nigerians know if they are doing what they're doing within the confines of the law and what the law prescribes, especially the Electoral, uh, electoral Act, on how much money and the cap uh, to which po political parties are not supposed to go above. As we speak, Serap is still dragging political parties to make their finances public, which has not been done. So, I mean, when are we ever going to have that conversation? We just keep paying lip service to these things, but it, in, in its reality, we never really go down to the nitty gritties to deal with the issues, the teething problems within parties, especially the issues of financing. And nobody is, even INEC, not even INEC, is, is really monitoring that to see that they follow up. Uh, and then I, I guess that I, I can hear INEC saying that, well, they're not the judiciary uh, and they cannot be doing the work of law enforcement. You have just said it all. It's a matter of the, the funding. If we don't really look at party funding and make it, in fact, we should make it, we should legislate on it, we should make it laws. We should put a cap, and then we should follow it up. It is if already a law, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Gorka. It is a law. It is a law. Again, I'm, I want to ask, who are the people who are going to legislate 
these are politicians. Why would I want to cut off my nose to spite my face? Can I ask you what the citizens are doing? Well, that's you know, the big, we that, that, that's, we that's, the, that's the trillion dollar question, isn't the it? The Nigerian citizen is docile. The Nigerian citizen is absolutely docile. And in any society all over the world, where you have a docile citizen, the politicians should behave the way they want to behave. When you talk about politics in Europe and America, because the citizens hold their leaders accountable. Here, we have, we have those are citizens. We want the angels to fall from heaven to, to, to do what our own duties as citizens. It's not going to work. Hmm. So rather than tackle the politician, we line up and say, oh, our children have not paid school fees. We have a graduation party to do. Oh, we have hospital bills to pay. We have this to do. That is what we present to politicians, nothing concrete. Hmm. So where do we go so, from here? Yeah. Because um, Naaba has also said that really, sincerely, he does not know what tomorrow holds or the day after. Uh, and that means that the future is uncertain in terms of our, our political process and if we really are going to be progressing or retrogressing. So um, what should we really be looking forward to as Nigerians? I didn't get your question. Yeah, I'm saying that what does the future hold? Where do we go from here? Because... The former speaker has said he himself, in reality, does not know what the future holds and he cannot e easily predict because of what is happening right now. Well, what the future holds is that uh, the young people, if you think you have what it takes, right now, voter registration is going on. Most of our youth are not interested. Uh, who are those that come out to vote? And who are those that don't come out to vote? So, if our young people are majority of Nigerians who, in quotes, are conscious of uh, 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 conscientious people, and they are not people of conscience, are not coming to participate, then we don't expect a better result. But as I see the political landscape in Nigeria, it's still very, it's still not uh, very well structured. It's still bleak in, 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 because. We don't have, for, for example, party funding and financing is something we have not addressed, and we are going into an election. Therefore, I mean, thought force or thought force or whatever you call it will not change anything. All right. Or we start on, or do we start addressing the fundamentals? Okay. Every other thing will become cosmetic exercise. Well, Amber Sikboke is a public affairs analyst, and he's been speaking to us. Thank you so much for your thoughts, Amber. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, I will give you my take. It's time for my take. Now, it's, let's go straight to the point. Every single conversation we've had in the past few weeks is about what the future holds for Nigeria, where we really want to go to. It goes beyond us just complaining and, you know, nagging about the things that our government are doing right or what they're not even doing. But then when it comes down to us taking steps to see if we can address those issues, we never do anything. And my last guest just said that now parties are, or ra rather there's a voter registration that is going on and he can, he can barely see the number of young people who are interested in this registration process. So in other words, how do we want to have a change in Nigeria if we are not willing to be part of that change? We want to have good leaders. Who's going to vote those good leaders into office if you do not take a first step by getting a voter's card? Secondly, we're out here, you know, saying, oh, well, we have too many problems as Nigerians, so let's watch reality shows and forget about our problems. Does it make the problem go away? No. The problems are still staring you in the face. It will stare you in the face the next morning. It will stare you in the face when you get out of your house, you open that door and you want to buy whatever. You will remember because your reality is still there. The reality show you're watching is not going to erase that. Nigerians need to start concerning themselves with Nigeria's problems. We're praying for Haiti. Let's pray for Afghanistan. Who's praying for Nigeria? Who's getting the Nigerian leaders to do the bidding of the Nigerian people? No. Every single person is out there praying for every other country instead of Nigeria. Let's face our Nigerian problem and deal decisively with it. I am Mary Anakom, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening.